John. Welcome back to the show. Good to see you. You too, my dear. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas and uh, happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Yep. 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 Um, So I want to go into, because we didn't last time, I want to go into uh, the different currencies. Okay. You know, if you can uh, share like some some information so people, you know, could more or less people that want to start investing, they can more or less figure out which way they want to go and they'll understand all the different options. Sure. But before we get into that, my viewers are a lot like me and we love backstories. And so I'm going to ask you if you could tell us a little bit about who's John Dowling. How did you get into this fight for freedom? How did you get into the forefront? And, um, and especially, you know, you have such a heart to bring everybody in, you know, to this global, you know, transfer that's coming. You want everybody to have the knowledge that you have. How did, how did this all come about? Sure. I don't know who that kooky guy is, but I'll do my level best. Okay. Um, so, oh boy, that's, that's a protracted question. I'll try to be as succinct as I can. My viewers tend to like when I'm to the point and you're, being a New Yorker, you appreciate the synchronous. Uh, well, it started, Denise, as you know, I'm in the music business, and I have been most of my life. Um, I was working with um, angel investors uh, most of the last, of the beginning of the 2000s into about 2014, give or take. And I guess that was where sort of this spun off from that in the aspect that um, I was trying to get a label deal. Uh, I got very close to getting a deal with Virgin Records. Um, I met Richard Branson and frankly was one of the most, what's a good word, um, chilling people I've ever met. Uh, it was, it was I did, as a Christian, my, my uh, instincts and uh, my spirit senses were going off that it was just a very dark, um, uh, platform energy that I had being around. I just did not feel good about it. And, you know, it's good that I didn't. God protected me and sidestepped me because had I gotten signed by them, this is talking 2007, 2008, uh, which is ironically around the time of the, uh, the housing market bust and the bailouts. Funny how no coincidence in the kingdom of heaven, everything aligns. So, I, uh, I declined it and, and got to get more importantly, God protected me and sheltered me from that. Because so what, what do you think that is that you were feeling? I just got a very demonic vibe. I just got a very dark, nefarious vibe. I did not feel good about the situation, being in his presence. It was just, it was making me want to run, to be honest. Um, it, you know, it was a lot of cloak and dagger kind of stuff. It's hard to explain unless you were there, but I'm sure you, you can relate in your yep. own experiences. I'm sure everybody can relate to a time where they met yep. somebody or saw something and they just had to flee the other way. And, and we also know there's a lot of nefarious activities in the music world, in the industry. Oh. Yeah. And so. it's, it's now showing its ugly head for the public to see. It's going to come out more and more. Uh, in, in 2024 and beyond, people are going to get a, a major wake up call, a rude awakening, I might add. Their favorite politicians and musicians and actors. Mm -hmm. It's going to be un, unfleeced. The truth That's is, it's going to be demasked off them. They're going to have to see it. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I went another route. And what happened was Virgin Records, for those who don't know, Richard Branson was very keen on buying Virgin Atlantic. He bought Atlantic Airlines and turned into Virgin Atlantic. And Often what happens, Denise, for those who don't know, is the music industries, most of the record labels are sort of the bottom of the barrel divisions. So, for example, Universal, who, who everybody knows for distribution and movies, they also have a music division. But the music divisions typically are a catch-all for their, for their losses. They can absorb all their losses of their other divisions into the music. It's the least profitable division of a company in the traditional cabal construct. And Virgin was no exception. Had I gotten signed by them, I would have been beholden to them for seven years or three albums, whichever comes first. And they basically dissolved and put all their money into the into the airline industry. <clears throat> and I would have uh, never seen the light of day. I wouldn't have been able to do anything. Anything I would have done would have been under the auspices of Virgin, and I would have just been relegated to obscurity. So as it turns you out, probably it, would have had a handler. And have a handler. Probably be subjugated to doing and saying things that 
were not alignment with who I am and my character, right. who God made me to be. <clears throat> so again, God's protection. One right. of the things I've learned in this movement is that patience is a virtue. God's timing is perfect. And what seems like a setback to us is actually a setup for our benefit. That it's Jeremiah 29, 11 in full spectrum action. So I started deviating away from, from the label scene, scene and started going into the investor side because I figured, well, a lot of the investors want to live vicariously through an artist. They want to follow you around, follow your coattails, say, hey, I knew him or her and I put money into them. And, you know, it's, it's a spectacle for their ego. That's part of what they're investing in. And I met several investors. It looked pretty good. It started to go kind of like job interviews. It was going up the ranks. It was making its move, but it just kind of petered out at a certain point. And then uh, 2012, 2013, somewhere in that range, I met a, a friend of mine. I, I called out a lifeline. I said, can you help me? I'm looking for the right angel investor. He said, yeah, I know somebody. Went through the hoops. I met his consigliere or middleman. I signed an NDA. You know about that. I signed an NDA um, to not talk about the details of the investors, which was fine. I didn't, you know, if I say I'm not going to do something or if I say I'm going to do something, I honor that commitment. But the crux of it was it was a Chinese individual and an American individual putting together a music entertainment company. And they were looking for different people. Mm -hmm. So I did the presentation. I talked to the middleman. He met me in downtown L.A. He owned the restaurant, bought me lunch. Over the lunch, he says sort of almost randomly, he says, hey, you know, while you're here in downtown L.A., you should pick up some dinar. I'm like, what? I didn't know what he was talking about. He's like, oh, yeah, it's the currency of Iraq. They got tons of oil and gold and all these precious minerals. And they're going to they're going to kill it at some point. You want to get on the ground floor. And I said, well, what we could do is if you guys invest in me, I could take some of the income or the salary you pay me and use the discretionary funds and jump in at that point. I wanted to be very focused and pragmatic about the, the item at hand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got through that. They set up the meeting. I did my business plan. They liked it. Seemed to go well. But then I just got some weird phone call that they they were looking for the next Hewlett Packard. I'm like, that's been done before, and that's not what I do here. Right. A very peculiar twist. So I came home. I was kind of depressed, and I sat in my recliner. And God said, the Holy Spirit said, "I want you to look up Christian angel music investors on LinkedIn." The most random thing I would have never thought in my natural right. mind, which lets you know that it's not you and it's him. <clears throat> so I looked up Christian music angel investors on LinkedIn and 11 names came up there again, Christian number, number of agreements with 11. And I met my now mentor, Donald Ward, who I had on my show actually almost a month ago. And it was great to do that with him, by the way, kind of nice. as, a, as a thank you, you know, homage. And he just, you know, he called me the next day. He was in Florida. I'm here in California. And he said, uh, he said, let me guess, you're looking for 10 million over five years. Like, how could you know that? I didn't even discuss any business plans of anything. He said, the Lord told me you were going to reach out. I was like, okay. And wow. he said, what if the Lord could make you your own banker? I said, what would that look like? He said, what do you know about foreign currency? I said, does this have anything to do with dinar? Because I just got this a day or two. He goes, yeah. I'm like, okay. Now now I got to, this is God, I got to dial in. So that's where it all started. And I just, you know, I, I liquidated with a friend, a small IRA, like three, five grand. And I just started buying dong and dinar. And then as each subsequent, um, phase in the season because i you know obviously whenever you get into something denise whether it's you know a stock or a bond or anything like that you you have your own sort of hopes and expectations about when it's going to sure. come to pass and and if, if you told me you know 10 11 years ago that it was going to take that long of course i would have said no way you know because i i'm not the most patient person and god knew that and he used this this um uh, opportunity to this 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 season to mold that patience for other things like eventually becoming a husband and father like I want to do it that's really obviously going to come in handy being a better business person being a better Christian there's no downside to having better patience and discernment in life and in faith so and, that, what, and, and I think it's good you're saying that because um, and I, I'm guilty myself. You know, we we thought Nasara Jasara was going to happen Christmas Day. I think it was was it 2020 right. Christmas or 2021 Christmas Day. We we're all like psyched, you know. And and it does take patience because we think it's going to happen, it's going to happen, and then it doesn't happen. I mean, you know. And so that's where the patience comes in. And and it's like everything. It's it's in God's time. It's not in our time. 
Yeah, but his but as you know, Denise, better than I do, God's time is always the perfect time. There's no better, there's no better time. It doesn't feel like it when you're in the fire. I think that's one of the things I learned in this movement, Denise, is that as a believer and as an investor, sometimes one and the same, you gotta stand in the fire. You gotta take the hits, you gotta go through the criticism and the judgment and the scrutiny. Um, but just like a lot of other things in my life within music, I saw people trailing off all the way through college. I mean, I went to Berkeley College of Music and I had people giving up on music when they reached the highest echelon of learning. And even then people were just like, yeah, I'm gonna go be a veterinarian. I'm like, what? And, you know, you, you made it to the most prestigious music school on the planet, or at least arguably one of them, and you're gonna quit now? You know, and that's when, that's when uh, I learned that winners never quit and quitters never win. And then Thomas Edison also said that people quit just before they realize how close they were to actually succeeding. I think it's we true. know in this movement that's paramount. But that's how it all started. Yeah. In each successive year that I've been in this, I've God's like, you know, given me time graciously, as he always does. Okay. At first, I thought it was just currencies. Then I saw the value in the metals. Then I saw the value in the bonds. And I saw the value in the cryptos. Then I saw the value in, you know, other things. And, and now, were you and, networking with people or were you doing this all on your own? You, oh, no, you, never, you never do it on your own. I was definitely networking. And I okay. mean, I don't know. If, maybe networking is not the right word. I, I was, God was, okay, for every people. challenge, like, you know, Denise, no, that's fine. For every challenge, Denise, in life that God puts you through, he always equips you with the right people on that journey. Right. And I've been very blessed in the aspect that I have a phenomenal set of people that are too modest. I always want to mention their name, but they never let me. And I've talked to you offline about that. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I have a phenomenal set of people that God has put at, through each charted course, as Sinatra used to say. Um, and and he, you know, he's put the right people that I needed for each thing that he's put me through, each one of these obstacles he's made away. And so you never do it alone. It's it's definitely a concerted effort. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, and and but you did you you did a lot of research because you have like all this knowledge. And I and I've told you before, John, you'll start talking and then <laughs> right over my head. You're off the <laughs> it's like you know you got to put put your little PowerPoint like in a dummies form for dummies. <laughs> yes, you're funny. But I I appreciate I appreciate everything that you're sharing with us. Yeah. Thanks. Well, so, I, whenever I do the PowerPoints, Denise, or even when I talk about things, I don't want to, it's, it's a hard, it's a fine line, right? Because, you know, you don't want to go over people's heads, but you don't want to condescend either. And you, cause you don't know where everybody is in their, right. in their skills and their comprehension of things. So I try to put it in a way that is, you know, straightforward and digestible, but also has some, you know, sophistication, some nuance to it as well. So well, I've learned, I've learned, yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. I've learned, I've learned so much from you over the years. You, you, you found me, I think in 2020, I believe. And then you reached out and, you know, we became really good friends after that. And you just really, you know, educated me a lot, you know, so I, I appreciate you. Um, you know who my networker was? My mom. <laughs> oh, she, that's great. She watched, she said, you're going to get with this gal, Denise. So you're going to get with this gal. Oh, that's great. You get with this guy, Mr. Trumptastic. I was like, oh, okay. Um, you know, that um, becomes a motivator, you know? So Yeah. 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 Well, thank her for me. I will. I will. Okay. So there's Zim. There's Dong. Can you, can you take us through the different yeah. options there are? Oh, gosh. I mean, well, first of all, there, there's 209 countries and provinces total, you know, all the islands and provinces. So there's the Iraq dinar, there's the Jordanian dinar, there's the Lebanese pound, there's the Vietnamese dong, there's the, the Thai bot, there's the North and South Korean won, there's the Venezuelan boulevard, but he talks right. about that. I, I always get every show, what about Venezuela? What about, okay, we got you, we heard you. Venezuela, there's the Zim bond, um, there's- uh, now That's good you said, so Zim is not a currency, it's a bond. No, it's a bond, it's definitely a bond, it's a promissory note to pay by by the bearer on demand. And it's usually backed by an asset. In this case, Zimbabwe, it's gonna be gold because we know they're replete with that from previous discussions. Um, you know, there's the British pound, there's the Japanese yen, there's <clears throat> the Russian ruble, which I'm gonna be investing in at some point, in Indonesia, ru the Indonesian rupiah, the India rupee. Right. So there's, there's tons of opportunities. So 
if if somebody's watching and going, well, I can't afford it right now, or you know, 99% of the people don't know about this, right? There's a, we're a very small contingency. God is going to give His people time, Denise, to get into this because He understands that it takes time for people to, to get through it. This, as I've told you before in your audience, this is this wealth transfer is not a, a one-shot deal tsunami. There's waves to this whole thing. So God understands in His benevolence, I need to give my people time to get up to speed. Some will miss the dinar or the dong or the rupiah. He'll continue to give them opportunities to get into it right to the very end. So I believe this wealth transfer is, I'm not, I want people to hear what I'm saying clearly. I'm not saying it's going to take three years. I'm saying that God's going to do the harvest period, the raking period over the next three plus years, I believe. It's going to be a series of things. Um, I think the, the, the reset process starts, what's well, already started, but in the natural and the, the, the front of scenes for people, I think after January 1, people are going to be very, very excited and pleased about what they see. So we'll be seeing revals, do you mean? Yeah, I think you're 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 going to see you're, what you're going to see is is come January 1st, like we talked about last time, Iraq is not going to let dollars go in and out of the country. They've stopped. The, they're going to stop the black market, not because they want to, but they're forced to specifically by China and Russia uh, are going to get already involved in this. And they they did those memorandums of understanding. Those are almost like promissory notes. And they don't they don't renege. They don't say, oh, hey, you know, we'll just forget about it. No, they're going to hold you accountable and they're they're going to get paid off on this. And they're going to make sure that that Iraq follows through because they have sizable investments in Iraq, as do many countries. Mm -hmm. um, that's why you're seeing Germany with country uh, companies like Siemens Electrical for the electrical grid. And you have, you know, all these countries vying to come in because they realize where Iraq is replete with a lot of resources, gold and silver and diamonds. We talked about that. Actually, what was interesting, I was on earlier today with our buddy Dave Mahoney, and I was bringing him up to speed that, did you know, Denise, that the largest amount of phosphorus in the world comes from Iraq? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. So the chances are if you're getting phosphorus or a product or a supplement of some type that has it, it's coming from Iraq in such shape or form. So they, they literally have a lot of, of natural resources at their disposal, more than people realize um, but, um, but I think you'll see that what's going to happen, Israel is going to, at some point here in the new year, they're going to hit the nuclear sites that Iran has. Iran, like Kim Clement said, will do a grave surrender along with Egypt. And what that will do will create a situation whereby Iran has to run into the safety of the U.S. for protection militarily. Then the U.S. will take the sanctions off of Iran. And at some point that Tomana Real that they're holding, which is another currency you asked about, uh, will take shape. It's illegal right now to buy, but at some point the shackles will come off. But more importantly, what that does is it takes Iran's hand off Iraq. Iran is the big brother to Iraq. Right. And to that end, what you have in the Iraqi government is a lot of corrupt Iranian proxies posing as Iraqis, holding down the grid of corruption. That's So when that dollar is removed, it, it takes all the weight of power off Iraq's corruption and that drug is removed like a like a cold turkey. And what happens is the, the government there is going to force be forced to give purchasing power to Iraq because there's no longer the dollar to back it. There's no longer it can't live off that anymore. So Iraq's going to have to power up in purchasing power real quick or they'll they'll sink because they're not going to be able to live on a, <clears throat> a 13, 10 rate that'll decimate them. And they've got way too much skin in the game. So I think you'll see that you'll see China, Taiwan which frees up Vietnam enough out of communism to let their dong power up in silver and go on the digital market, just like Iraq will go digitally. And if you look at my Telegram channel, you'll see that I've put in articles in the recent past that denote that Iraq is going back to the 1940s pricing. What does that mean? I researched it along with our team. And back in the 1940s, the rough rate against the dollar was four dollars and seven cents. Now, I'm not a date and rate guy. I'm just telling you historically what they've done. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the starting rate could be. It could be a dollar. Could be, it could be four dollars. Nobody knows. But the point right. is, the point is, you take what they have said they're going to have to do, coupled with a digital gold-backed dinar asset platform, and this thing's going to move because it's been suppressed like gold. Look at look at the price of gold and silver. It's doing nothing but moving up now. Because they're not going to be able to paper Suppressed. it down anymore. Well, yeah. 
now that banks are forced to be Basel III, which we've talked about, which is just Swiss form of compliance, it basically in layman's terms for the people means that the banks have to show transparency on their balance sheets, what they're carrying. If they don't have enough gold and silver in stock, which is why you're seeing banks buy up gold at a crazy amount, because they're trying to save face, then they're going to go out of business. So that's why you have Wells Fargo and JP Morgan and the usual suspects mm -hmm. um, buying it up like crazy. Iraq is actually one of four Arab countries this week that just announced that they have over 1 million tons of gold um, in circulation or in storage. So, you know, it's for the purposes of compliance coupled with the new blockchain, because that's how it's going to go digital. That's how everything works together. Does that make sense? Yeah. What happened with the gold that was in the Vatican? <laughs> Oh, that got that got taken down a long that time. Got taken down, right? A long time. Ago. Well, all, not those that birth certificates, all the gold. Um, yeah, that got planes and planes have gone in there over the years and, and fleeced all that out. I mean, there's you probably seen. I don't know if you've seen it on my channel or other channels, but you know, here we have the Pope again having all these strain, strains of illnesses. You know, they're going to string out that narrative. You just saw that uh, Rosalind Carter just passed away, yes. right? Notice that Trump and Obama weren't there, but Melania was. Interesting. Another yes, problem. that was interesting. Yes. Uh -huh. And now you're going to see, I believe next what you're going to see is you're going to see Jimmy Carter finally be announced that he he's passed. 99, 99 which, years which, old. Right? Which, will be, which will be Biden next or whoever that is. And so it's you, just today. I want to just, can I just read something really quick? Because sure. this, kind of, this is kind of important. I put this up on my Telegram channel earlier today. I don't know if you saw it or not. Just bear with me. I didn't get a chance. Well, I'm reading right from the article. You can see Deputy British Prime Minister tells UK citizens stock up on candles and batteries for a grid down situation. Then there was another one here. Uh, I'm going to try to pronounce this. I'm running out of consonants with this guy. But Saudi Prince Talal bin Abdullah bin Bandal al Saudi. Close died. enough. Yeah. That's now, close who was enough. he? He was one of the Saudi, Saudi, prince, prince? Saudi princes that was responsible for the petrodollar being in place. So you have him passing today. You had Kissinger pass away last week, which was the godfather of the U.S. petrodollar that he probably worked with, who made Nixon kind of be the fall guy for the gold standard being removed. Right, so right. Have, and then you had Sandra Day O'Connor. So you have a lot of historic pieces. What, what, what that tells me is the old guard is falling away. It's the parallel like this where they're shifting over like tectonic plates. They're, they're encircling or overlapping. So you have the old guard dying, the old system dying, and the new system coming into place. What's happening with King Charles? Did we hear anything? I, I mean, you know, I said there was an article the other day. He's He's got emergency meetings with, with Philip, and he's trying to turn over the throne. But I think that's just a that's narrative. What, yeah. what do you think that is? I think it's a narrative. That's It's for them to save face you know, to try to look like they're passing the torch. But, you know, all of the cabal has been has been already dealt with. It's it's just, this isn't for us. I think a lot of people get frustrated and they say, what's taking so long? Why can't we get the truth? My mom says it all the time. When, 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 when? When do you see the truth? I'm like, mom, it's not for us. It's for the normies who don't know any of the stuff that we do, which is roughly... 99% of the population, if you don't believe me, go talk to somebody about it. They look at you like like you belong in a, in a booby hatch, you know, because yeah. they don't know because the, the mainstream news doesn't report any of this. And you know, you know when you're talking to somebody that all they do is watch the fake media. You know right off the bat. Like I was, I was talking with somebody a few days ago and he's like, that Trump. He's so evil. He's so he's so racist. He starts all these fights. And I'm like, oh, CNN yeah. watcher. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. yep. MSNBC or whatever. They all have the same script. Well, it's the Mockingbird media. You know, they all right. cajole you with the same narrative over and over again. It's like Hitler did. You tell a lie enough times, it becomes a truth. It's brainwashing and mind control. That's, That's what we're exactly dealing with. Yep. And then to bring up our buddy again, Mahoney, I had talked about this with him offline a couple weeks ago. He, he travels quite a bit, as you know. Um, and I put an article a few weeks back that the president of Portugal stepped down and resigned. They put that out on the mainstream news. But what they failed to report, because they never give you the whole context, Mahoney calls me up. He goes, mate, he goes, you were right about the prime minister. So I'm just reporting the article. It wasn't me. 
He goes, no, but it's worse. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I'm in Portugal. They just announced in country the entire government was arrested. Holy never came on the mainstream, never talked about it. Wow. They're, they're telling the public of a possibility of a recession, but let's just, you're a New Yorker, I'm an East Coaster, let's just be honest and cut the crap. We're in a depression. Yeah, it's terrible. You know, it is. You know why? Let's call it what it is, you're right. Well, a depression, let's define what that is. Okay, well, let's define a recession. A recession is two or more quarters of a negative GDP, gross domestic product where we make less than we're taking in, right? Your balance sheet at home. Yeah. You know this, you got a certain amount of money, certain amount of bills, and the bills are more than the money that you're bringing in. Yeah, $800 more every month each household is paying. Not surprised, I'm surprised it's not more. more. Okay, so, so depression is five or more quarters of a negative GDP. We have already been in that since 2022. I looked at the numbers and all the stats. I have a friend I interviewed uh, a couple weeks ago, he, he, I can't mention the securities company, but he works for one of the largest securities uh, brokerage houses in the world. And, and he explains these charts to me because it's, it's, I'm, I, I learn because I'm surrounded by great people who are willing to share the knowledge and I just absorb it. But yeah. he's showing me the charts because John, we're, we're in a depression. We're not in a recession, but they're not telling people that. No. Even Trump said, even Trump said recession is the nice word. Yeah. And if that doesn't wake people up, then what's going to wake people up? I hear a lot of Democrats saying they're not good. they're not going to vote for Biden again. They're saying it, and that's that's a, that's big for a Democrat to admit that. Well, it is, but they also probably remember that he was once a Democrat too. And I remember the media asked him in his first term, "Why did you leave the Democrat Party?" He said, "I didn't leave them; they left me." So you know, yeah, it is big. But I mean, he predicted that a lot of people, Trump. You know, in many ways, I can't prove it, but I, I, I get the feeling that he's a time traveler or something, because how does he know all these things are going to come to pass? And then they happen. And he tells you months, years ahead of schedule. Well, with Q, it's months and years ahead of schedule. Right. Yeah. But there, there's no way that you could know that in a human sense. Yeah. I mean, yes, the military gives you information, but it's on a different level with him. Yeah, you know, I believe. I believe he's hearing from the Holy Spirit. I really believe God is directing him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, he's what Kim Clement said. Kim Clement said that the Lord said, I'm going to use a non-believer and put him in the highest office in the land and make him a praying man, a man with hot blood. And for those who are really paying attention, you can see the subtle differences in Trump from 2015 to now. He's not the same person. He's not. You got you got to look beyond the optics and look about his. He's actually incredibly uh, compassionate. Um, I'll tell you a quick story, which goes back to your original question about how I got into this. Uh, so it was ninety seven, ninety eight when I moved to New York City after college and uh, um, got an apartment on forty six and second. You know the area. I do. By, by the useless nations and uh, and and Dag Hammarskjöld and all that. We've talked about that. <clears throat> and my uncle. Um, was the chief legal counsel for the for the Yankees, and he worked for a. He's retired now, so I can say this. But he worked for a law firm. You might have known on, on I think it's 60th and between Fifth and Sixth Avenue, uh, Wachtell Major. It's it's almost on the Columbus Circle side. Anyway, so he was a partner in that firm, and and then he worked for Steinbrenner, the original one, not the not the Suns. And uh, so he would do a lot of their different PR events and. If you remember that movie, The Scout, or For the Love of the Game with Kevin Costner, yes, all those scripts, or there was that movie with uh, Nicolas Cage, It Could Happen to You in the 90s, mm -hmm. anything associated, even Stein, Seinfeld, anything associated with the Yankees, he had to approve the script to make sure it was oh, historically wow. accurate. Okay. It was contextually accurate to the Yankees that we represented them correctly and, and justly. So that was his main gig. So the, the Yankees would do a charity event every fall, I'm sure you know, at the Waldorf Hysteria. <laughs> or the That's, Waldorf uh, Astoria, right? Those, New Yorkers like you know what I'm talking about. It's on 50th and was it 50th and 5th? I think. I think it is 5th. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, so um, the first year I was there, my uncle was was gracious enough to invite me and said, "Hey, you want to come have dinner with me and meet the Yankees?" Like, yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, right. why would you pass an opportunity? Whether you like the team or not, it's immaterial. It's a great opportunity. Now, who were the who were the popular players at that time? Well, you had Jeter, you had Jordan, oh, like, you had uh, Scott Brocious, you had, uh, I think that was 
Chuck Knobloch just got there. Wow. Um, Bernie, Bernie Williams. You know, funny story about Bernie Williams, sidebar. Um, he is an excellent guitar player professionally. Um, I go to this music show every year in California called the NAM show. They call it the name show, haha. But it's a National Association of Music Merchants. It's the largest um, music uh, uh, inventory. All the major companies like Yamaha and PV and Sony, all the major players go every year and they show their wares. And all the heads of the companies go and they, you know, like Guitar Center and Sam Ash and all that will go and they'll decide what they're going to buy for the year of the new products and the inventory lines. But it's also a great musician hang because artists like me go in and if you're endorsing the product, you have a relationship, which I've been blessed to do. You mm -hmm. get to play the stuff. You get to hang with other. It's almost like college for adults. You get to hang out with people that I went to school with, kind of yeah. catch up. You Sounds know, like you, it's a lot of fun. It's You get to play with amazing musicians, get to network, like you said. Anyway, yeah. so, um, so, so I went to that. Bernie Williams was there. Uh, I met him in 2011 after he retired. And he's a phenomenal guitar player. I mean, he's wow. like, I said, Bernie, can you say something for the rest of us? I'm like, you know, and uh, so he, he has a he has a great memory. He actually remembered me at this event I was talking about with the Waldorf Astoria from 2011. Uh, from from 1997 to 2011, yeah. He actually once we started talking, it came up, and he actually remembered. I couldn't believe it. And um, like some people have that kind of memory. So, so I'm invited to the event. So I'm, you know, sitting with my uncle, we're having dinner and president Trump walks in. He wasn't obviously president then, but they put a spotlight on him. He walks up, he shakes my uncle's hand. He mills around with the players, but he was incredibly generous. He gave a very good, nice, generous donation to the, um, I think it was a cancer charity of some type, if I remember right, but he was very generous. He has been known to uh, a lot of his employees, he gives, he pays really nice bonuses. He's very loyal to his employees that are loyal to him. So I've heard he's, that. Dem mm -hmm. he's demonstrated that time and again. And, you know, I, I met him for all of, you know, 30 seconds, you know, but he, he was a larger in life character back then. And so it was, uh, it's just funny how, how these things, like you never knew, you know, what, 25, 26 years later, it was going to come full circle, but, but God knew. And here we sit. Right. And you're going to meet him now. You're going to meet him again. I would love to play for him at the White House one day. That's one of my goals. Yeah. So put yeah. that on the bucket list. Yeah. I say, I say go for it. I think you will. Well, God willing. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. All right. I think that's excellent advice. We are called to be good stewards with what God gives us. Absolutely. So, I actually, that? if you don't mind, I because we've known each other long enough, so I, I think I can take a shot and ask you a personal question if you don't mind. <laughs> um, over the years that we've worked together and collaborated, I've noticed, I don't know if it's your screen or you have good manipulation of effects. I don't know what it is, but um, I've noticed subtly that um, your skin and your hair are always kind of like really glowy and translucent. I don't know if my eyes are playing tricks or it's just very, it's very healthy. And I was just wondering, like, what do, you, what do you do to do that? Do you take some special supplement or something? Or are you just blessed? Like, how do you get that? Wow. Wow. Well, that's well. That's good you're asking. I I always had a problem, um, especially with the hair, um, a lot of frizz and and dull and everything. But um, that's thank you for noticing. Um, sure. I've been using this uh, product. It's really great, and it has this. Uh, the main ingredient is glutathione, okay. which is a natural antioxidant. And what it does is it helps with the uh, the the cellular structure of your skin, the collagen. Hmm. And it's supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be great for your body as a whole, you know, your whole well-being. It's supposed to be really good. But it does say that, you know, one of the effects of of this product is uh, that your skin will glow. So thank you for that. All right. No, oh, you're welcome. Um, what, is, what is it? Like, is it a supplement or something? Um, well, what I'll do is I'll put, I'll put the information in the, uh, in the description below the video. So, oh, okay. Every, you, can and, you, know, you could check it out and, and the viewers yeah. if just said they could check it out too. Yeah. I'm kind of curious. I have to check yeah. that out later. Thanks. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Did I blush? <laughs> I don't know. You're red. You're redhead. So it all blends. <laughs> thank you for that. Well, yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you for, you know what? I just love when you come on because, you know, like I said, some of it goes, 
but um, I am absorbing everything that you're saying. And I know my, my viewers are, are absorbing it too. And, uh, you know, I just really appreciate you. And this is a ministry. So I yeah. don't know if you think it is, but yeah, this is definitely a ministry. God is definitely using you, you know, for his people to uh, mm -hmm. prosper. Yeah. He wants, a, he wants his children to prosper. He does. He does. And I, and I, you know, for, you know, cause you, you know, I've talked, you know, for, roughly 11 years that I've been in this movement or happening or blessing, whatever you want to call it. Um, I spent most of the time behind the camera because I didn't want to, um, you know, I, it's not easy for me to do this. It may look easy, but it's not. Uh, and it's hard, you know, cause you're putting yourself out like, like a fishbowl. You're on a mic, you're putting yourself on an Island. Everybody can see it. Uh, but I kept waiting for enough Christians to kind of come out and, you know, give the well transfer from God's point of view. And I just wasn't seeing it in a way that was, that I felt really satisfied and I prayed about it and I just kept, you know, all my friends kept saying, you should do it. You should do it. Like, no, no, no. You know, I'm, and, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to. Yep. Huh? I was that? one of them. I was one yeah. of them. Yeah, you were. And, and I, you know, I delayed it because I didn't want it to be about me. I wanted it to be about him. And I'm just like, God, somebody needs to step up and, do something, say something. And this goes back to what you just asked me about a minute ago about what people can do that say God will provide, right? If I took that posture and said, well, God will bring somebody into the, the fold, you know, he'll take care of it. Then we're not here to have this conversation. We're not here to share this information. Lives are impacted negatively by not be, by being robbed of the information. So um, it really isn't about us. It's about him through us and just getting past ourselves, getting past our uh, shyness or our, 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 our reticence of things, just getting out there and, and, and just being obedient. That's the key. And God will bless it. So um, this, I just felt like, you know, it was time to say something. And, and it seems like with now everything about to converge and happen into the natural, as once again, God's timing is, is perfect. Um, I did want to ask you a quick question since we're here. Are sure. typically you have a great set of followers and they're they're very uh, uh, hands on and kind and very uh, uh, loyal to you, which which I can see why. Um, you typically ask me questions. Did you get any questions from anybody or anything that I can address while we're here? Um, I guess the, the yeah the, the the question basically is you know what do you recommend what do you what do you recommend like you talked about all the currencies there's so many to pick from yeah um uh one of them is well what do you recommend do you recommend so, that i could start with like say i'm gonna go tomorrow and purchase something what would you recommend well yeah disclaiming the fact that i'm not a financial advisor i'm not giving financial advice right. i'm not telling you what you should do i'm just telling you what i've done my recommendation, if you're looking to get in the game, first, first, as always, go back to God and pray about it and ask him what you should do, because he may not want you in the things I'm going to talk about. He may want you into currencies or into metals or into bonds, but you don't know until you have that conversation with him and ask and wait patiently for the answer whenever that comes, which oftentimes is not immediate. Right. Um, we don't we don't serve a God who's like us with instant gratification. Thank goodness. But. What I have chosen to do is invest in the Iraqi dinar. I have chosen to invest in the Vietnamese dong, the Indonesian rupiah, uh, and the Zim bonds. <clears throat> I'm also invested in, uh, what else did I get? The Thai bot and the Venezuelan boulevard. And as these, we'll call them tranches of mm -hmm. wealth transfers occur, or, or micro transfers, if you like, uh, then I'll be investing in the next set of currencies that he puts in front of me, um, whatever that looks like. So that would be my recommendation. I recommend everybody get at least get one ounce of silver. And if that's too much, then get get yourself a pound of copper. It's less copper. than three dollars. Well, okay, but the spot price is probably, I don't know, closer to ten. But I mean, ten bucks to yeah. get precious metals. Come yeah. on, I mean, nothing. It's that Maybe. or or a cup of Starbucks. Well, that's the thing, you know, you can always pull away from, as people are pulling away from right. old indulgences, it's priorities. If, if if you want something bad enough, you'll find a way to make it happen. If you don't right. want it bad enough, you'll always find a way to not make it happen. So there's hardships for sure, but then there's just flat out excuse making and, and skirting. And, you know, not that I'm a fan or anything of him personally, but, you know, music 
we hits us in different ways. Don Henley had a song back in the day. How bad do you want it? Not bad enough. You know, mm. and you have that. You have to do a gut check. How how much do I really want to get some skin in the game? Because this is going to require some sacrifice for some people and a skin in the game. But the what God will do with that will far outweigh the, I, risk and the, the energy you put in. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Thank you for that. And you notice I said Starbucks. I know. Yeah. I know you yeah. like the way I say you. How, how do I say coffee? Go ahead, John. Coffee. Coffee. See, now, I don't think I say coffee, but you say I say coffee. So you, you and Christopher Walken would have a good conversation. <laughs> Go ahead. Let, let, let's let's end the show with a little bit of Christopher Walken. A little bit of levity. <laughs> oh, Denise. Yeah. It's on fire. It's, it's red. Like, crimson. <laughs> I don't know. I do this. It's fantastic. The way you don't call it, yeah, do you? I wouldn't believe you do. Let's go out for some coffee at Starbucks or your local cafe, wherever you like. <laughs> okay. Let's do that. <laughs> we need to send this video to him. <laughs> oh, my God. I will probably shoot it. <laughs> How many people have impersonated that guy over the years? It's crazy. Oh, my God. Well, you shared a very funny uh, SNL clip. Yeah. Oh, oh the, my God. Um, the plants, that one? It was the whole family. It was a reunion. Oh, right, right, right. Um, the right, walked right. in the walked in family guys, you have to look that up. It's on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, everybody was copying him and that <laughs> like the walk-ins, a uh, Tala tribe. Yes. <laughs> They're like, it is so great to see Wait. you. Yeah, yeah. Reunion. So, <laughs> I don't know. Right. That wedding was 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, crazy. Everybody needs everybody needs levity. Oh, especially in these times, absolutely. Everybody needs levity. Yeah. <laughs> and uh I don't know who likes Jim Brewer. I love Jim Brewer. He was from SNL. He's a oh, yeah. great he's, patriot he's great. and he's in a movie called uh Christmas Smells. <laughs> it's about a sensation yeah. worker. <laughs> yeah. He's gotta love that guy. He's, he's that looks he's like a good movie. Him. He's putting himself out there for sure. And uh he it, really it, is. In the end it'll wear well for him once the truth comes out. That's right. And he's seen a lot of stuff. He's oh, seen a lot of things that he didn't partake in. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't want so to be I'm glad history. that you didn't get caught up in that. You had no. you had God's hands on you. He was protecting me against all odds and all costs. And, and, and like I said, what I learned through that is what seems like a punishment is actually our protection for our, our benefit. You as a parent know when your kids were younger, you punish them. But ultimately, as they got older, they realize you're actually protecting them from making a bad mistake. Right. You know, these things take time. And, and, and in the annals of this wealth transfer, we will look back historically and realize as hard as it was, as long as it took, it had to be this way to get us where we need to be. Absolutely. All in God's perfect timing. That's right. Absolutely. Amen. Aww. Well, thank you. You're welcome. It's always, it's always great having you on. Thank you for joining me and uh, right. we'll do it again. All right. Sounds good. It was I'll, fun. See it was I'll, fun. See the, I'll see you in the new year. Yes. Happy holidays. No, wait. Merry Christmas. Merry, like Christmas. Christmas. Merry yeah. Christmas and Happy New Year. And happy, ha happy Hanukkah. Absolutely. And Happy Hanukkah and Happy Kwanzaa. And don't forget the last one. What, Boxing Day? Are you a Seinfeld fan? Uh, Festivus for the rest of us. Happy one? Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Frank and Santa. Uh, all right. Thanks so much for being on and I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, John. God bless you, Denise.